Starting at number five, Shammerdahl, who's undoubtedly the best or well, I say undoubtedly, probably the best horse I've ever trained. Unbeaten in his short spell with me, I only had him as a two-year-old um, when he won his maiden, the vintage stakes at Goodwood and then the Jewhurst. Gradually increasing the advantage over his rivals, headed by Black Velvet, then back in third place is Rowan Tree. Wilco is sticking on from Berkhamstead, but Shamardell is just extending away. Five lengths is the gap back to Wilco. In third place is Rowan Tree from the back of the pack. Uh, Black Velvet, Stagbury Hill wants in the clear, but Shamardell has comfortably won the Bird Clico Vintage Stakes and is upwardly mobile. I think during that period, I firmly believed I had the best two-year-old in, in Europe and when I followed him later I thought he was probably the best miler of his generation and I took him to the races I would never fear the opposition all that mattered was is Shamardal turning up at his best or anything close to his best and it was just phenomenal to have a horse like that in the yard. But Shamadow pouring it on, gallops on relentlessly to win the Jewhurst. Second oratorio. At number four, quite different horse, Jovanna's Pace. Jovanna's Pace came to me as a seven year old, I think, um, uh, with a relatively low handicap mark. Went on to be the oldest group one winner in the Northern Hemisphere. And we just had a fantastic time with him. He's a very difficult horse to train, very difficult on the gallops, very, very difficult uh, from a behaviour point of view. Uh, commonly dropped his jockey on the way to the start or on the way out of the paddock and would sometimes run loose for a while and then get remounted and often win. And he was just a, a tremendous horse to train and with tremendous owners, John Keeney, who um, had just a great attitude to it. When when Giovanna's pace got defeated, we would retire to the bar and plan the next one. Never got down about the defeats. Uh, always looking forward to to what was to come. And thankfully, he got his Group One win in the end. Oh, but Giovanna's pace has done enough to hold on from Iskand, who ran on well in the end. Possibly slightly unlucky. Adnan was third, better on four. No, it makes it disappointing. Last of five. At number three, um, Mr. Bailey's, uh, probably the, the, the horse who had the biggest single impact on chain, changing my career. Uh, that first classic win, the guineas with Mr. Bailey's was just incredible. Phenomenal to come to us so relatively early in my career, considering where I'd started and for an owner that uh, was the first owner to support me by sending me a, a horse. When I applied for my license back in the beginning of 1987, I had to have promises of 12 horses. I actually had promises of 20 horses from people who had been clients of mine when I was in veterinary practice. And in the end, only one of those clients uh, came up with the goods and that was Paul Venner. So it was absolutely tremendous to train a classic winner for his company, Bailey's Horse Feeds, um, just, what was it, uh, seven years later. And, uh, you know, very, very exciting times. I can remember almost like it was yesterday, the whole day. And so probably the, like, the most significant race for me in my career and so um, number three in terms of my favourite horses. At number two, a horse that was around at the same time as Mr Bailey's, exactly the same age, and they were in the yard together as three, as two and three year olds, uh, double trigger. And I think now, as I said to somebody the other day when uh, he was writing a, an article about the great stairs, that I think if you went to a race course and, and asked a, a race goer, any, any follower of racing, um, to name a horse trained by Mark Johnston, the, the majority would name Double Trigger. I'm still more known for Double Trigger than for any horse that I've trained. Perhaps that was because he was around so long, from two-year-old through to uh, finishing off as a seven-year-old, um, but also his colour, his style of running, 
the fact that he he finished first. He won the Goodwood Cup and uh, with his brother coming second. The first two full brothers to to finish first and second in a in a group race. He won the Stairs Triple Crown. He was never champion Stair, which was totally ridiculous and you know a, a fault of the way it was um, decided in those days. Um, but he did win three Goodwood Cups. Cave Tara raising another effort, double trigger coming back as well. Inside the furlong, can he do it? Double trigger, reaching deep for reserves of stamina. He's going to outstay the ball and win his third Goodwood Cup. It's double trigger and goes under with the Goodwood Cup. What a mighty performance. Second does Cannon can tight third. A phenomenal horse and again took us all over the world and probably the horse I'm most remembered for. The horse which I always say I'm most proud of training and who won more Group 1 won races for us than any other is Attraction. Uh, she won five Group 1s for her and I say I'm most proud of training her because there were so many excuses perhaps during her career to retire her and so many chances to uh, that she might not have, have done what she did. She never went to a sale as a yearling because the, the sales companies wouldn't take her. Uh, both her front legs were quite offset at the knee and uh, she was deemed not to be a, a good candidate to go to the sales. Um, I was actually offered her to, to, offered half of her in turn for training her as a yearling and I stupidly declined that. I was then asked if I could find somebody to lease her and I declined that as well. She, I think the same deal was offered to Tim Easterby who also declined it and then to the late John Hills and John said yes he could find somebody to lease her uh, and he thought he could find somebody to lease two other fillies of the Duke of Roxburgh so the, the Duke of Roxburgh sent three fillies to John Hills and by the following February or March, John had only managed to find an owner to lease one of them. And Guy Roxburgh told John that um, well, he could train one of the other two for him, but one was to go to Mark Johnston. And John got to pick the one to go. And perhaps inevitably, he chose to send the filly with the, the, the crooked front legs. And so attraction came to me in March of her two-year-old year, already cantering from John Hill, so very sad for John that he lost her. Um, but as I say, there was maybe many instances because of her confirmation that um, she might never have gone into training even, and then there was times when she could have been retired. She fractured the pedal bone at the end of her two-year-old career, and there was thoughts of retiring her then. She did a, a strain the suspensory ligament, which was a pretty serious injury at the beginning of her four-year-old career, and she could have been retired then. And it was just phenomenal to, to, for her to win five group ones for her. And a bit like I've said over Yovana's pace, the other great thing about attraction was the attitude of her owner. From that uh, first day that she ran, she won first time out. She won her second start at Thursk, and and then third time she went to the Hillary Needler, which was then a listed race at Beverly. And on each occasion from then on, Guy Roxburgh, if he was in the, the paddock beforehand, he would say to the jockey, you know, she owes us nothing. Everything she does from now is a bonus. And it was just a tremendous attitude. Uh, he never let the defeats get him down. He was always so grateful for, for what the, the filly had done. and. Thankfully, she retired to stud and did very well there as well. And so she's the horse that I'm most proud of and has to be at number one of my favourite horses. On the far side, then Hathra running on down the centre. Sun drop from Red Bloom. Carry on Katie and Natalia. Attraction still holding sway. A length and a half clear of Hathra. Attraction from Hathra. Sun drop, a late run on the near side. Attraction wins the game. Possibly fourth.